Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about different techniques on weathering and detailing a structure. Uh, but before we get started, I want to tell you about this fantastic modeler that I know, a good friend of mine, James A. Powell. If you'd like to see his work, please visit his Facebook page at Dirt Spot 7. And I'll put the info on the screen below. Um, he is a fantastic modeler and just incredible at weathering. So be sure to check out his work. All right, well, like always, we have a lot to do, so let's get to it. Okay, so we are working on the kit of the month um, from Foscal Models. It was the September kit from 2019. Now, as you can see, it is raised. The door on the side is raised, and the front door is raised, and there's a platform. Now... I have a brick foundation that's going to go under it. So I'm going to lower the entire structure down, which means I need to cut off the bottom portion of the kit. As you can see here, the side wall, I'm going to cut the bottom off, which I did. Now, the top is raised. You can see the front of it is raised. Now we're going to add another, maybe two more stories on top of this. So I need to also get rid of that. So I'm going to lower it. Let me show you what I did. So on the side wall, I cut the bottom off. Now what I'm going to do is take the bottom and put it onto the top. That way, when I cut the bottom off the front wall, now these two are the same exact height. This side wall doesn't need to be touched. It's perfect. The back wall, I had to cut a small peak off the top. So now all of our walls are the same exact height. Now I'm going to cut these walls, four exact walls, out of this. It is beadboard. And this is one eighth inch beadboard that means there's one eighth in between each of those raised strips now you have to make sure that your board runs up and down okay as you can see i've got my extra walls cut now i will go into my window box and pick some windows to put in it. I wanted to mention quick that after I get my windows picked out and cut, I will put these walls together like that and have the bracing run the entire length on the back side. So real quick, I cut an angle on the side walls and I went down 3 eighths from the top and then just cut that off and then completely three eighths off of the back wall well as you can see my walls are all stained let me show them to you i don't know if you can notice the little black dots I'll tell you how I achieved that look. So I took some odorless thinner and poured some into a little container. And it doesn't take much at all. Then I used an oil brusher. This one is Starship Filth. And... I just dipped it into the container with the thinner. And I dipped this in there probably four or five times. Kept dipping it in there and stirring it. Then, in that mixture, I took Starship Filth 
shader, which is water-based. And I'll show you. I just tipped it upside down and squeezed it and put one, one little drop came out. Now, these are, it's thinner with oil paint. And then I mixed in the water-based paint. So what happens is that little drop that went in there broke into thousands of tiny little specks. And it won't mix with that. And this is the result that you get from it. Now, you could put in more drops. You could put in two, three, four, if you want a whole bunch of specs. I think it represents um, like maybe knot holes in the wood. So it's kind of a neat, uh, a neat little trick. The nice thing too about using the odorless thinner with um, an oil paint is that your wood doesn't warp. When you use um, acrylics with water, the water will make the walls um, warp. But these did not curl at all. So I just finished staining my trim with the same mix uh, that I used on these. And I have a little bit left in here, very little. And again, it is the uh, thinner, um, any thinner will do. This is White Spirits from Windsor Newton. Um, that is a little bit stinky. You can get the, um, it's worn off, but this is an odorless thinner from Ammo. Now we're gonna take the Starship Filth Shader. See, it says shader at the top. This is water-based, uh, but it's thin. It's like an ink. One drop. Hopefully you saw that. It was just one little drop. Actually, let's do another one. Two drops. These shaders last a very very long time go we'll stir it up and I don't know if you can see inside there all the little dots because it won't mix the oil paint and uh, <laughs> the water the uh, acrylic which is water-based uh, they won't mix so you end up with all those little dots now, I think I'm just going to go, maybe, and there is no warping. You could soak this with the thinner, and it will not warp the wood. It's so nice. It's still wet, but I don't know if you can see all the little dots <laughs> it's very exciting i'm just loving the ammo products okay so as you can see we've jumped ahead so for the lower section i just simply sponged on burnt sienna and for the upper part that's yellow, I sponged on sunflower. The oysters sign came from a kit that I built on the channel from Carolina Craftsman Kits. The sign here, Hatter, is from the actual lower part, which is a kit. So you can see on the side, that sign. And I simply just cut out the center of it. Wow. 
Now on that little kit, there is a, a structure that goes on the side. Here it is right here. I'm still going to build that. But once I get this glued onto my brick foundation, I then will put that little structure all the way down to the bottom of that, down to the street level. So I may wait to build this until I get this in place on the layout. For the letters on the word fish, I used these, which I got at Michael's craft store. Now I had to change them a little bit because you'll see there is the letter S. So you can see I had to cut the center out and then join them together just so that it didn't look so uh so much maybe like neon or too modern uh this is still a little bit modern for me but it works we're gonna go with it next we're gonna do some detailing um i want to cut some i have these metal panels that um, I've done it before on different kits, and I always save my leftovers. Well, I'm going to do an overhang above the two windows that are up high. We'll do one in the front. Well, we'll make a row of them, <laughs> and then we'll do a row on the side. Um, and we're going to use the leftover scraps. We'll even use some of the blue colored ones um just mix and match them and then i always save all of my little scraps of wood and all these little blue pieces are from the last structure that i built in the video that came out before this one and i have some that are have a reddish brown on them and we're just gonna again mix and match everything and create the framework for those rusted panels to sit on so uh, we're going to I've already drilled some holes for detail parts let's see I may be running low on glue let me see if I have enough to do this. I think I do. Now, sometimes I will put a primer on my metal castings first and then paint them and then glue them on, but I'm kind of in a hurry. I want to get this project done. And you can see I purposely have it slanted out just slightly so it's not perfectly straight just sort of adds a little character to it by having it kind of crooked. I have a chimney. This one I want to make sure it's pretty straight. And then it gets a short uh, straight pipe put on the very top of it. But for the holes, I just simply took my knife, poked it in there, and just kept twisting it. <laughs> I do have some drills that I could that I sometimes also use but like I said I'm kind of wanting to wrap this up and I want to be able to finish it so that uh, the video gets put out quick for you now I have a detail casting for the top here and what I did was I took one of the rusted panels and all it is is uh, brown construction paper and I sponged on um, some silver and some rust colors to make it look like rusted metal. I cut a little piece. I'm going to glue that on first and I already put a hole in the center of it and I've got a hole in the roof already. Now we'll put some super glue onto the casting and again this probably should have been 
uh, primed first and painted. Uh, but because I'm doing a video quick, I'm just going to do it this way. While we let that all dry, but let's do a little bit of weathering on the clapboard on the bottom. And I'm going to rough it up a little bit, lift some of them. We're going to go right along the bottom. Now, this, I, I can't do too much because I have a structure that that pops out right here. So we're just lifting some, kind of nicking it. Nothing much. This is up pretty far from the water. So we're just going to have the wood kind of maybe a dark brown. So it appears that maybe it's kind of rotting a little bit. Let's see, we're, we're going to use a uh, oil brusher and you can do this two ways. You can put it directly on the model or let's take a piece of cardboard. We'll take our odorless thinner. And that's all it takes. These last forever. Now we'll take a thin brush, dip it into our thinner. Uh, I'm just kind of putting a puddle next to it. Okay, now we can mix it. And on all those areas where we lifted the clapboard, we can put a little bit right underneath it. It doesn't take much and it just soaks right into the wood. Okay, we need a little bit more. And when I'm using dark brown. Okay, while we've got this out and I've got some mixed, let's put some running down from this pipe. We can have some running down from here. This just takes some practice. You know, at first it looks like maybe you're putting on too much, but it soaks in to the wood and the uh, odorless thinner evaporates and it's not as large as what it looks like at first when it's all wet. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to see this good. The trick with most of the ammo products is to not just use them straight out of the bottle. Now you can put a dot on here then take your thinner And blend it out so either either way uh, but my point is that a lot of the ammo products also require you to use thinner to get the full effect um, you don't use most products even like the uh, the shaders these are water-based, so you thin them with water. 
but you want to use water with them. Um, rarely do you use product straight from the bottle with the ammo stuff. And that is why they last so long. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, before I paint my castings, I'm going to put a little wash running down on the roof. Now I am using track wash. This is uh, a wash that the military modelers use to put over the tracks on a tank. But um, it has a really nice brown, reddish brown tint or hue to it. And it really is an amazing effect. It really looks like the rust has stained the rooftop. Now it looks really wide right now, but when this dries, that thinner will evaporate and just leave the product on there. Now right next to the pipe, I am, I had some more of the dark brown um, oil and I'm gonna put that right up towards the top of it. Let's put some around the base of the chimney. And I'm just adding like some dirt marks to it. And again, all of these products just last so long because you're using so little of it. A little goes a long way. So I like to have two bottles. I have one that is uh, White Spirits. It's just a Windsor Newton. It has a little bit more of an odor to it because it's not an odorless thinner. But it's just good to rinse your brush in that one and then keep the other one just for clean thinner. And then if you have some water, which I do, I just rinse it and wipe it off. And your brush is clean. So now I am painting the castings. I'm actually using, what is this? Bittersweet chocolate. And we're not trying to get it completely covered because we'll give it a second coat. Make sure that your glue is completely dry before you do this, because if your wet brush touches wet super glue, it will instantly dry on your brush. All right, I'll quick blow dry this with my hair dryer. Now I'm getting my brush wet and now we'll just do another thin coat. You could actually do a thin coat of, let's do that. Let's switch to burnt sienna. You can see it's a very thin wash that I'm doing. There's a lot of water in my brush. I'm actually going to do some black. A lot, again, a lot of water in my brush. And I'm just going to brush on some black right at the bottom of this pipe. I'm completely rinsing my brush. I'm going to drag that up. Now we'll just let that run down and completely dry. pretty wet but all right and then we'll take a uh, a gray and do the top of the chimney now this is pretty light a pretty light gray but we'll weather it we'll put some powder over it to dirty it up and it'll make it darker it's so much fun getting to this stage where you're doing the small detail work it really brings the structure to life. You can see already with what little we've done to it. Um, 
it just makes it more exciting. Yeah, let's just play around with our, since we've got our black out, I'm gonna add a lot of water. My brush is completely full of water. If you wanna go a little darker around the base, sometimes it's really just about adding that contrast. By making it darker around the base, uh, it just draws more attention to it. I wanted to show you this really quick, and I highly recommend that all modelers buy a small color wheel. And one that can rotate. Now you'll notice in the center of this, there is a thin triangle, a bigger triangle, a rectangle, and a square. Let me show you how I use this. So I have yellow on the top of the structure. And that yellow is maybe right there. That's going to be the closest to it on the color wheel. The bottom is a reddish brown. And I would say it's probably one of these two. So let's line up our triangle as close as possible on those. So I'm in between these two, so I'm gonna put my one point right there in the middle. Then this one is pointing to that yellow. So now it's pointing to the blue colors. Now obviously with our model, we don't wanna go with a bright blue, so we're gonna go down here and I actually picked this color right here and made the door on the side that bluish color. And it just helps to um, draw interest to it, it helps it pop out. So I wanted to show you the other side. So this side shows you what a color can change to if you add another color to it. For example, if, let's say, if you've painted something blue, if you, say you painted a figure and you made the pants blue on the figure and it's just way too bright, it's a little too cartoony looking for uh, the look you're going for. You can add orange to it and it gives you, it grays the color down. So just by adding a little bit of orange to that blue, you get a gray color. Now, obviously, if you do 50-50, you're going to get that that gray color, but if you just add a small drop of the orange, it'll tone down that blue and make it less bright. So this is really a guide. Um, you know, the colors aren't gonna be this bright. It's up to you to tone them down, but this gives you an example of you know, if you're using, say, a yellowish color and a bluish green, well, according to the chart here, let's go with the let's go with the big square. So for the two corners up here, you have blue, green, and yellow. Go down to this corner and you've got a red orange and this corner of the big square goes over towards the violet blues so that gives you your four colors to use but it's up to you to tone them down or add grays to them or add colors on this side to get it to the right um, shade that you want. So again, I think that this is a, a very helpful tool. And after using it for so long, 
after a while, it'll just become second nature. You'll just sort of know what colors to use. Uh, but starting out, this is a, a good tool to have. Okay, now that our paint is dried on our pipes, let's add some rust pigments. I'm using light rust. So I just dip my brush in there and then tap it off on the side. And I'm just hitting the very top of these. Gives it a dried powdery rust look. Okay, so I'm gonna build my little canopies that go above the two windows. I've already cut the piece of wood that I want for the length. So then I cut my little pieces of sheet metal. Now we're going to build these upside down. So the back side is going to go against the building. So this is the front part. And I purposely made it a little uneven. I didn't cut them all perfectly the same. I lightly, lightly tap it. Just to kind of smooth it out a little bit. Then, we'll glue that right towards the edge. And I probably went about a sixteenth of an inch back from the very edge. Now we'll do the same on this one. Okay, now we just have to make our little braces that go from the front back to the building. And we'll put that on there just like that. Now I've cut another strip that's the same length as this one and we're going to glue this right above the window now i need to take some of this and figure out how to cut our little braces that will hold this up Okay, I just took some clear water, got my finger damp, and kept wiping over the brick. I'm just using white Elmer's glue, full strength, because this is wood and the uh, structure is wood. Now once we get this on the layout, it may get a little loading dock built or a little wood deck in the front with one or two steps going up to it. We'll have to see how it fits on the layout. Okay, on the front, I'm going to glue on this little box. And it could be an electrical box. Uh, with fuses, it could be a box just where they um, store tools or things that they use a lot that they need on hand. Um, I like to think that it's for uh, electrical, that it's fuses in there. But it can be whatever you want. I painted it first a dark gray, then I sponged on slate gray over it, which is a really light, it's kind of a light gray. Then uh, the metal, the handles and the hinges, I used medium rust, and then got my brush wet while it still had the medium rust on it and did a light wash so it looks like the rust is running down. This is a white metal casting, and we're gluing it to wood. 
So I'm going to use my uh, Loctite super glue. I use the uh, gel control because it really gives you a lot of time to move it and get it in position before it completely sets. Okay, I took some of my scrap wood I had laying here. Just so happened to be painted blue and I made this little hoist on above the door on the front. I'm now making a couple gooseneck lamps. Here are the lamps, the lamp shades. And you can see I've cut my wire. The lamp shades and the wire are both from TitchyTrainGroup.com. And the wire, you get 12 pieces that are 8 inches long. And the thickness of the wire is 0 0.015. So 12 pieces at 8 inches long will probably <laughs> probably last me the rest of my life. Because you only use about oh a quarter of an inch. So first we'll cut the shades off the sprue. And make sure that we clean them up a little bit. Make sure there's no little pieces of plastic sticking off the edges. Now since it's on there, let me show you if I can. Pretty small. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little bit of the wire sticking out the bottom of the lampshade. I'd leave that because it ends up looking like the light bulb. Now they actually provide you teeny little light bulbs on the sprue believe it or not and you can add those uh, let me see if I can show you up close that little light bulb um, I never use it but it's there and you can <laughs> I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue around the top and you can do a little bit at the bottom just smearing it around same on the sides, we'll smooth it out a little bit. Okay, that one's done. And all I did was, for the wire, um, take a brush, any, take, say, a paintbrush, and bend it over the metal towards, towards the bottom. Just bend it over there and then bend it the opposite way back. And that'll give you the shape. Just have to have patience. Sometimes you'll grab one of the wires and it'll quick snap and flip and go off into who knows where. You'll never find it again, so you have to bend another one. So I do have some very, very tiny little drill bits that I use to drill those holes. But if you don't have these, really you can just use the end of your X-Acto knife and put it right where you want it and sort of twist it a little bit and then just slide it in. Okay, well I think this project is finished. I uh, painted the uh, gooseneck lamps an off-white and then just put a little wash of medium rust on the edges. And as you can see, I did my Pepsi sign. I simply did a Google search for vintage Pepsi signs and I put Vintage Pepsi sign images. And the first thing that pops up, it'll show you maybe five images. And then right below it, it'll say view all. Click on view all. It'll take you to a page that has 
hundreds of vintage Pepsi signs, all different types of Pepsi signs. So you just click on the one you like so that it becomes larger. Then you drag that onto your desktop. Now, whatever program you use, um, if you can change the DPI, which is dots per inch, change the resolution. I change it to 300 DPI. Automatically, any image that you drag off the internet is going to be 72 DPI. I then change it to 300 DPI and then I measured my model to figure out what size I wanted to make it. And I believe this was, well, really all I was concerned about was making this one and it came out to 1.75, which is one and three quarters. And then I just printed that out and sanded the back of it. Um, the sandpaper I used uh, is 150 grit sandpaper. I sand the back of it as thin, I make it as thin as possible. Then with a brand new blade, I carefully cut it out. And then with white Elmer's glue and some water, it's close to 50-50, brush that onto the back of it very carefully. Be patient when you do it. And then pick it up with your tweezers and lay it on right where you want it. And then start to press it down. I then took some um, Russian earth. It's just a, a light brown pigment. It's a grayish brown. And brushed over some of it like around the edges and underneath the window so uh that's it I, I think it turned out great i really really like it and again i picked it because of the colors that we talked about on the color wheel okay to put our greenery along the bottom we're going to use aileen's tacky glue now I take the lid off and it's kind of gooey, kind of sticky. So you just want to be careful. Okay, you want to make sure that you rinse your brush really well. You don't want that stuff drying in it. Now we're going to use Woodland Scenic Fine Turf. <laughs> I'm sorry. We can use a little bit of that, but we're mostly going to use coarse turf. Now you can see it's starting to get um, starting to get sticky. If you let it sit for a little bit, um, it just starts to get sticky. But if you let it sit too long, it dries. So. Then you can just brush off whatever doesn't stick. Okay, now that we've got the, uh, the fine turf out, let's go ahead and use some of it. Now this is just regular Elmer's glue. We'll just sprinkle over where we put the glue. Okay, well, this project is finished. Now, once we get this on the layout, I'll probably put a little deck, wood deck in the front with stairs going down, and then we still have a, a little shed. Uh, I'll probably cut it down. Let me see. Oh no, perfect. Okay, well, here it is on the layout. We'll work on the structure here next and I have the front wall so that you can see. It's a two-story building. 
So like I mentioned in the last video, everything just gets taller and taller as it goes up towards the lighthouse. So we start out with a two-story structure. It then goes to three stories, four stories behind it, and four stories over here. So I'm using the structures as my mountains. So I'm just going uphill. Now the entire shape of this, it starts out low, goes uphill, goes back down, and then back up again over in this corner. And then the whole back wall will be tall structures and an entire tree line. I hope you all enjoyed today's episode. Just remember, every technique that I've shown you on this channel can be applied to any scale modeling that you're working on. And I believe that all of you watching can do this. It just takes time and practice. So I challenge all of you to push yourself and really try to become better modelers. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. Hey, be sure to check out my friend's work at Dirt Spot 7. It's James A. Powell. He's a fantastic modeler. All right, well, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.